workers will hand you the bread and the wine and not me, okay? And so uh, just be safe, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And so um, that's, that's how we'll do it today. Um, looking at uh, the week ahead, there's several things. Soup and scripture, there's Bible study at 5.30 and, and there's soup for you. So we do two things at once, um, Bible coffee, now, Wednesday's busy with confirmation and parish league and all for praise and so on and so on. So take a look and see where that fits you. Um, uh, next Sunday, uh, also worship here at 11. Are we ready for the announcements? Am I past? Am I supposed to be standing back here? <laughs> hey, am I on TV again? Sorry about that. I like to go talk to him closer, so. All right, I'm back up here, so here we go. Uh, next announcements, yep, we got that. Next Sunday, I follow this. Uh, prayer requests. We have several things that we need to call your attention to. Uh, continuing to pray for Bob and Steve and Marlene and Bob Braun, that's Mike Braun's brother, who's having some issues. And Margie had surgery yesterday, and as far as I know, it went well. That's all I know. Does anyone have any other information about Margie? She fell and broke her hip. She was trying to help somebody else. Do you know? Did he fall from a mountain and it broke her hip or her leg? It was her leg? And her hip better because it went well. Oh, it went well. So hopefully she was on the mend. Okay. Uh, Luther, Stuart, Holly is continuing. Um, Deb Mack has not received uh, good news and neither has Terry Price. And so we want to continue to keep those folks in our prayers. Um, Oliver uh, is on his way, or he's in Sioux Falls. They've discovered he has diabetes, and so they're treating him there. So little Oliver, we pray for him. Okay, any, any other, um, anything else that I should add to the prayer list there? We want to add a congratulations to um, Jesse and Alexi Carson. They were ordained in Minnesota. Uh, Alexandria is one of them, Monsiela Osakis. All right, so we want to congratulate um, them on their ordination into the ministry and we'll continue to pray for them as they share and, and pray God's blessings on them. All right, any other announcements? as of now. If not, we will continue with our worship. As, oh, any birthdays? Anniversaries? Am I missing anybody? Got have any issues with them? No, 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 okay. Please stand as we begin our worship then this morning. And today is a mountain Sunday, so we welcome you to the mountains. In the name of God who creates mountains, the name of Christ crucified on a mountain, and the name of the Spirit deep in the mountains, amen. Holy, 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 earth is filled with God's presence. Christ, as we come into this sanctuary today, we enter the holy mountain of God. Holy, 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 this mountain is filled with your presence which takes us right into our opening hymn, Holy, 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 HFG 323, or on the street.
In our call to worship, we invite the mountains to worship with us. Mighty boulders and deep forests, sliding glaciers and swirling snow. We invite the wild to join us in wonder. Gliding eagles and coyotes, dragonflies and elk. We join with the mountain creatures in praising God. Walleye and crawling creatures, sunflower and honeybees. We call the depths of the mountains to celebrate. Black hills of old and rose quartz, volcanic lava and rivers red We enter the mountain of God today, and we worship in God's presence, a sacred place on our planet. We celebrate the song of the mountain. Sing, mountain, sing. We celebrate the song of the mountain. Sing, mountain, sing. Now, take the fragrance symbol you received at the door. If you did not receive one, raise your hand, and there will be one back there. They have some for you. Okay, I, I don't have one, but that's okay. <laughs> we got it. And uh, rub it between your fingers, and I think you'll find that this one is quite fragrant, right? All right. And share with the person next to you a special memory of a mountain that stirred your soul. Just take a second if you want to, if you think of a time or a place on a mountain. I've got three stories in the sermon, so <clears throat> very quickly and whatever, there's something. My first view of the mountains were in Montana. All right. We remember the mountains where God chose to reveal a special presence, Mount Sinai and Mount Zion, a presence that also fills our planet. We remember our excitement as a child, climbing a peak and viewing creation, wonders that extended almost forever, and fascinating creatures around us, the mysteries of God's wild world. We remember and rejoice. Thank you, God, for mountains to remember, wild worlds to make us wonder. As, as we hold this fragrant symbol of love, we remember and confess that we have become alienated from Earth and viewed mountains as little more tourist spots, hills for mining uranium and riches, or wild beasts to be tamed. We are sorry. We have polluted rivers with waste from mountain mines. We have turned the wonders of the wild into a commodity. We have killed creatures in the wild with chemicals. We are sorry. Christ hears your confession from Mount Calvary and forgives your sins against the wild. Christ, teach us to love earth as our own and mountains as gifts from wonder. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. God, our Creator, as we descend from the mountains, we celebrate the wonders of the wild that surround us. Help us to see in the surrounding landscape the places where the planet has been polluted and to emphasize with the groaning of creation beneath us. Teach us to recognize that the hills are alive with your spirit and to rejoice with all our kin, especially the creatures of the wild. In the name of Christ, who reconciles and renews all things in creation. Amen. You may be seated, and we will continue with our readings for today. Anyone? Thank you. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 65, Good News from a Holy Mountain. The prophet dreams of Mount Zion being transformed into a peace mountain, an ecosystem where humans and animals live in harmony. Look, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. Past events won't be remembered. They won't come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I'm creating, because I'm creating Jerusalem as a joy and her people as a source of gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad about my people. No one will ever hear the sound of weeping or crying in it again. No more will babies live only a few days, or the old fail to live out their days. The one who dies at a hundred will be like a young person, 
and the one falling short of a hundred will seem cursed. They will build houses and live in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They won't build for others to live in, nor plants for others to eat. Like the days of a tree will be the days of my people. My chosen will make full use of their handiwork. They won't labor in vain, nor bear children to a world of horrors, because they will be people blessed by the Lord, they along with their descendants. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Wolf and lamb will graze together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, but the snake, its food will be dust. They won't hurt or destroy at any place on my holy mountain, says the Lord. The psalm comes from Psalm 48, Mount Zion, God's holy mountain. The psalmist hails Mount Zion as the city of God that re rejoices in God's presence. In the city belonging to our God, the Lord is great and so worthy of praise. God is in its fortifications, revealing himself as a place of safety. We dwell on your faithful love, God, in your temple. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Judah rejoice because of your acts of justice. Word of God, word of life. Stand for the reading of the gospel, which is previous to this section. Jesus has told his disciples, Go to the mountain, I'll see you there. And so now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them, I have received all authority in heaven and on earth, therefore. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The Gospel of the Lord. Bring this to you, Christ. Okay, you may be seated. And um, <coughs> kids, you want to come up? <coughs> Has ever seen a mountain? Ever been to the mountains? How many of you have been to the Black Hills? Okay, then you've all seen a mountain, right? Good, okay. Um, have any of you seen the Rocky Mountains? Like that would be in Wyoming or Montana, whatever. How about the Catskills? Cascades? How about the Alps? I've been to every one of those. Can you believe that? Well, you should. It's true. I have. We rode a train of the mountain in the Alps, and it was really interesting. Um, if you can think of one thing, like when you were in the Black Hills or whatever, that you remember, okay? Can you think of something that you did either out there or what you thought about the mountains, how big or how small or whatever they were? Anyone say? What do you remember? What? Driving on curvy roads. There you go. There's a couple for you. What do you remember? Remember anything? No. Did you go to any place fun when you're on? Just stay overnight. What? Did you stay in Custer? No, I don't know. Where'd you stay? 
Yep, Stephen Custer, that's what I thought. Okay, is that fine? That was good. There, put a couple up. Do you remember anything? Hey. Huh? Oh, you like, okay, you, you like the Rockies. All right, here's a couple more. Is that the same one? Put a couple more. I got plenty. Might as well, as long as we got them all here, we'll put them all up. Okay, now I want you to take a look at those and look at the bottom row, okay? Doesn't have a thing on it? Okay, that's great. Look at the bottom row. What have we been talking about? You remember the first Sunday? It was all about creation. Good job. Okay, creation is the bottom row of things that God has created. What's the second row? What did God create? People. Good job. There you go. And the third row, he created what? The sky. The sky. Good job. And then today we're talking about what? Mountains. Okay. So, this is the last Sunday that we're going to be talking about the things that God has created like that. And so it's kind of been kind of cool, hasn't it? Of all the things that we think about and the things about our world that we have. Um, the thing that we're going to kind of center around, though, a little bit is like God's mountain. <laughs> it talks about a couple of places like in Jerusalem where quote, God dwells. Did you know that... Uh, the church in Jerusalem, the synagogue, or the church there, is at the, kind of the top of the hill. So you can see it from all over the place. Have you ever been on, you're going to Britain sometimes, and you can see in an Amherst elevator? Can you do that? You've seen that, can you? Have you guys ever seen that? It's amazing that when you get, you know, when you see something, or something in the top of the hill, and you can look down and see something, or you can see it up high. God's mountain is a very safe place for us, okay? That's where God lives. And it's, and, and uh, if, if I remember, I heard a story one time that they put glitter in the, in the stuff around the church and that. And so when you looked at Jerusalem and the church in Jerusalem, it would not only, you could not only see it, but it would like glitter in the sun. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Um, um, I remember uh, my first view of the mountains, and it was, uh, we were driving across Montana, and everything was kind of flat, and all of a sudden in the distance, we could see these big black mountains way off in the distance. And it was really a, really a cool thing for us to see. Um, I remember seeing Mount Hood, um, you ever heard of Mount Hood? That's in Oregon. Anyone here seen Mount Hood? Nope. Just me? Jeez. Where have you been? <laughs> um, anyway, Mount Hood, you can see that mountain from like 50 miles away. When you're coming down the river in the Columbia Gorge, you can look ahead and you can see it sometimes between, between the trees and stuff, 50 miles away or more. That's how big Mount Hood is, so that's pretty cool. And mountains are neat. Mountains are neat. And in our text for today, God is talking about the mountains and how he wants to live in the mountains. And sometimes, if you think about it, we are God's mountains too. Because we have some of the same qualities of mountains, how they're steadfast and faithful and and um, the awesomeness of the mountains. So we are going to be a part of God's mountain and we are going to remember that God lives in the mountain and that God lives in our hearts. Okay, and you had that little smelly thing. Did you guys get smelly things? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and what did it kind of smell like? I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> what did it smell like? Cinnamon. Cinnamon, kind of a little bit. And also, if you got a green one, What's the green one smell like? Pine, like pine. Well, not pineapple, but pines, like pine cones and stuff like that, because that's part of the mountain. And so it's kind of like minty flavor, right? So, okay, book. Let me see if you can rip that apart and share it with everybody here. 
good job. See, and I, can, I just finally figured out that if you buy the kind of those tops, they're way easier to open. You get those other ones, I never could get them. <coughs> good, I get them open. All right, have a couple. You want to pass them out, see if anybody else out there wants one. Oh, pray with me before you go back. Just for a second. Oh, my, we thank you, Lord, for the mountains. We thank you, Lord, for even the mountains in our lives because they teach us lessons. We thank you, Lord, that you live in us and that creates a bit of a mountain, an awesomeness and faithfulness and an eternal kind of thing in each one of us. So thank you, God, for mountains. Amen. So share the love. And if you run out, there's another one here. It's, and I only had one for patty, so it's regular chocolate, so you can, you can dust those up. Okay, thanks for coming up. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We don't live in the mountains here in the plains of South Dakota and Northeast South Dakota, but we live in the hills. And uh, perhaps you have a favorite mountain spot that you can think of. It's kind of hard for me to choose. Uh, I remember I climbed Harney Peak in the Black Hills. Anybody? What? Oh, yay, a couple of them climbed Harney Peak. Um, I skied on Mount Hood. Nobody had ever been to Mount Hood. Hike trails in Norway. All right. Yes. Yes, in Hollingdal, where my cousin lived. Uh, it was near Stavanger, and we climbed a place called Trika Stolen Rock, and some of you may have heard my little story about that, but this was a hike uh, from hell, in my opinion, and the fact that I thought I would not survive, it got to be about 7 o'clock at night, and we still had several feet to go downhill, at least we were going downhill, um, but I lived to tell about it, and so uh, it gives me a feeling of accomplishment that I climbed that. But it is, it's an amazing thing. You climb it from behind, and Creek of Stolen Rock means preacher's pulpit. So therefore, you come out to the top of this rock, and it is sheer cliff, straight down. And if you look down, it's so high that we saw these little boats with tourists in it. Why we didn't do it that way, I have no <laughs> But anyway, these little boats, and they looked about this big, so that's how high it was, and it took us it said, it said in the brochure, a three-hour climb. Like a six, seven, maybe. Anyway, it's, it's a great story. But anyway, one summer, uh, my Aunt Margaret and Uncle Elmer took us um, to Mount St. Helens in Washington State. How many have been there? Okay, all right. Dale, you and I are going to have to do some more traveling together. <laughs> But it was about 10 years after St. Helens had erupted. Um, there was new trees and new grass just beginning to grow, and there were companies like Weyerhaeuser had planted thousands of new trees on the slopes. But Mount St. Helens had been dormant, if you think about it, since 1857, and it erupted on May 18, 1980. How many of you remember when it erupted? Remember the ash and all that kind of stuff? Even in South Dakota, we got it. And I don't know if you, I, I, I forgot about this. <clears throat> it got this tall, but when it blew up, it blew half the mountain off, and it blew to an altitude of 12 miles. It blew straight up, 12 miles. Isn't that amazing? I thought that was amazing. 60 people were killed, and uh, in a 75 mile area, there was, uh, there was little or no vegetation or people who survived. 
the uh, mountain's elevation was lowered from 9,677 feet to 8,364. So it lost over 1,000, 1,500 feet in the explosion. That is amazing. I think about the fire that's bubbling inside some of those active volcanoes. Um, when we were in Nicaragua, I think this is always interesting, we drove up to this active volcano, and it wasn't really very tall or very high when you think of a mountain. It was more like, you know, like one of the Black Hills, you know, it wasn't that tall, but it was an active volcano. They would only let us stay for 10 minutes, okay, that was the total, and we had to park instead of like, okay, so here's the parking ramp area, whatever, you didn't park up to it, you turned around and backed in so that you were ready to go, so you wouldn't spend the time trying to turn around. I mean, it was, it was, it was like, um, um, I don't know, you just felt a little apprehensive, and it smelled like sulfur, big time, just sulfur. Um, but it was a climb that I definitely remember. Well, we all have our mountain storms, and I think that life itself is all about finding mountains and facing mountains that we have to climb. Climb every mountain, sound the music says. There's a book called Hope for the Flower. Do you remember that? Two caterpillars, stripe and yellow, they're climbing to the top of the caterpillar pillar. It's a wonderful Easter story about hope and resurrection because they turn into butterflies at the end. And I think we too, we kind of climb mountains to find faith and to find hope. I think perhaps that maybe the unhappiest people in the world are the people who have no, no mountains to climb. Those kind of people have no hope. But there are mountains everywhere. And every one of us faces our mountains. We climb mountains because we want to grow in faith. We want to be fulfilled. We want to be productive. We want to find some of the mountains, I think, that we climb, if you take a look at your life, you were born, you probably got an education, uh, found a spouse, got married, raised children, had a job you enjoyed, were financially secure or not, you enjoyed friends, a social life, you retired, you hope to be happy during all those times. Those are mountains we climb, the big ones that depict our lives. And then there's the everyday ones. How we get the harvest in the bins before it rains? Living with a cold for five days. Hmm? Passing that algebra test. Having enough money to replace the old car. Facing a surgery. Facing treatment. Replacing the worn out carpet in the living room. Going to see grandma in the nursing home. Deciding when to get a COVID shot. Those are every day kinds of mountains that we face and use. And then there are spiritual ones. Oh, I've been so busy, I don't have time to go to church. That's a mountain. Well, I hope she won't notice that she gave me too much change back. I don't know how to tie a quilt. <laughs> church council meets on basketball nights. They can do without me. I can't help with you, girl. Is it a nursing home? Change my life? Commit my life to serving God? Those are mountains. And I believe that to climb a mountain with Jesus can be exhilarating, full of adventure, and fraught with danger. And it is not for the faint of heart. There are times in our mountain climbing experiences when we are going to feel like we are all alone. Perhaps we're hanging on the ledge by our fingertips. And it appears that there's no one there to help us. In our gospel text, Jesus had just been crucified. And in the previous paragraph, there were rumors about the soldiers that had said that Jesus' disciples came in the night and stole his body while they were sleeping. And it said in that text, their story spread widely among the Jews, and it's still, they still tell it today. That's biblical. But the disciples believed Jesus when he said, 
go to the mountain in, Gal in Galilee and you will see me there. And so they left for Galilee, our gospel text says. I know that there have been times in your life and in mine, God has given us the instructions. He said, go to the mountain and I'll see you there. Want to join a Bible study? Want to help your neighbor? Want to sign that petition? Have we followed? When God says, go to the mountain, I'll see you there. Listen up, don't grow old before your time. There are people who are young in body, but they're old in heart and they're old in spirit. They have no desire to climb the mountains. If our only ambition in life is to make money and be comfortable and whatever, we're an old person already. We need to say to Jesus, wherever you lead, I'll go. Whatever you say, I'll do. Whoever you say, I'll be. We must answer our call to go to the mountain. We climb those mountains to find faith, to be fulfilled, to be productive, to be happy, if you will, have hope. And if you think about it, Jesus came to this earth, he faced the greatest mountain anybody ever had or have or will have to face. It wasn't just the dying, it was the mountain of our sin. It was a mountain of humankind and their sin. Think about that. He had to climb that mountain and he had to plant the flag of God's forgiveness on top so that we could spend eternity with him. He died on the cross. He was buried, raised from the dead to show us that if he can climb that mountain of sin, there is no mountain that we cannot climb with his We climb mountains to grow in their faith. God gives us mountains to climb so that we are drawn closer to him. It seems that us Christians, it's not that we're not following God. You're here this morning. That's, that proves it. But are we following him wholeheartedly? Always room for improvement. I will never forget when there was a pastor, Tom, do you, how many remember Pastor George Thompson? Some of you? Some of you remember Pastor George Thompson. When George Thompson preached, there used to be flowers over there. Those flowers would shake. Remember that? I mean, he was a preacher. <coughs> and he was preaching on Proverbs 22, 26. And there it said, it was 23, I don't know, anyway, Proverbs 22 or 23, my son, give me your heart, it says. That's all. That's just a little line. And I remember him repeating, my son, my daughter, my child, give me your heart. I know it was a turning point in my faith to help me climb that mountain of commitment. God doesn't want half a heart. He wants all of it. Jesus himself said, the greatest commandment of all is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. There's a song that we used to sing, I don't know if Herrick Schlegan, I don't know if it's still popular, but it's by Audrey Meyer. It was called, All He Wants Is You. And it went something like this. I'm not singing it. Something more than gold for the master, something more than gifts to appease. There is only one thing that you alone can bring. There is only one gift that would please. All he wants is you. No one else will do, not just the part. He wants all of your heart. All he wants is all of you. All he wants is you. God asks us to commit all. Now that is a mountain we are invited to climb.
Will you and I climb that mountain? Commit our all to him? <clears throat> he says to us, go to the mountain. I will see you there. Amen. Continue with our sermon here. We believe that God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. We believe the earth is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with our kin. We believe that God became flesh and blood, became a piece of earth, a human being called Jesus Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us suffered and died on a cross for all human beings and for all creation. We believe that the risen Jesus is the Christ at the core of creation, reconciling all things to God, renewing all creation, and filling the cosmos. We believe the Spirit renews life in creation, groans in empathy with the suffering of creation, and waits for us for the rebirth of creation. We believe that with Christ we will rise, and with Christ we will celebrate a new creation. Peace of God be with all of you. Let us share the peace of the Lord with one another. Peace of the Lord be with you. Want to share or say hi? Whatever. Touch it. And then we will continue with our offering. You may be seated. You may be seated. We'll continue with our offering.
let's pray that uh, offertory prayer together. God, our creator, through your love, you have given us these gifts to share. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks and our concern for those in need, including our fellow creatures on planet Earth. With all creation, we bless our creator. Amen. We prepare for the prayer of the people. We thank God for a wondrous creation. We celebrate with all our kin. And we pray for those in need as we name them now. So let us pray for the church, for all of its creation, and also for all those in need. Father, you hollowed out the valleys and raised the mountains up. And so we celebrate your mountains, the creation, and the challenges to our faith. We celebrate your faithful love to us and the righteousness we find in your holy mountain. Lord, we especially pray for the farmers as they harvest the crops. Keep them safe, help sustain the hope of a bountiful harvest in our fields and in our lives. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you made the mountain of Calvary a holy place because of your forgiving suffering and your death. May we accept your faithful love and commit to following your commands. Today we especially pray for Margie as she recovers, um, for Holly and the treatments, for Oliver and his new diagnosis, and for Deb and for Terry as they continue to praise God. Uh, we also thank you and pray for Stuart and Luther and Bob and Marlene and Steve and Bob. And Lord, we congratulate Jesse and Lexi on the Lord and Nation. May they be a blessing and may you bless them forever. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy Spirit, you have made the city of God to share the joy of the Holy Ghost. May we heed your call to discipleship, to climb the mountains of our faith, to grow, to draw us closer to you, to commit our hearts to loving you, to making disciples, and to loving one another. Help us to climb our mountains so that we may see you there. We celebrate you, O Lord, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercies through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will continue with our meal on the mountain. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Christ calls you to be his disciples, to come down the mountain and serve him by caring for creation, especially the mountains where we celebrate God's presence with our kin. Hold again the fragrant symbol in your hands. Will you care for creation? We will care for creation. We will rejoice in the mountains. We will celebrate God's presence. Receive God's blessing. May the Spirit of God blowing from the mountains fill you with the knowledge of God's presence on earth and the pulsing of Christ within you. Peace be with you. Our closing hymn is Rejoice the Lord is King. <laughs> 